Hi everyone, it's Rick here from the Game Creators once more. Well, I'm back in my Tetris demo game and I'm going to show you a pretty cool feature of the debugger. First, I'm just going to go to um, Preferences and turn on On Debug, try to bring the app to the front. Well, I'll just run the game in debug mode because debug runs the player like so. And if I stop, if I break it now, You'll notice this window stays in front. And sometimes you want to see what's happened when you break into the game through the debugger. Now, we have some values here for logo X, logo Y and scale. I need to determine where this logo is and how big it is. So if I just continue the game, but put auto update on, then I do this, you can see, I can position the logo. That's in the x-axis. I click on this icon, I can change this one. So, and again for the scale. So let's say I just want to make it a bit smaller. Move it over to the x a bit. And that might be the ideal position for it. So you can see visually it's really easy then to get your values that you need rather than just guessing if you're typing in the code. Let's take a deeper look at the features of the debugger. At the top here where the icons are, you've got compile, run, broadcast and debug mode. So I've written a little program here to illustrate some of the debugger features. What I'm going to do is set a breakpoint. So where named all of this variable here uh, is set to equal my name, Rick. I'm going to put a breakpoint and I'm going to highlight that variable, right click on it and add to watch. If we go to the debugger tab, we can see that name dollar will be watched during the debugging process. So when I run this code, the program will run and then it should break at that point. Run debug. The program has broken here, but this variable is not yet set. So we just do one step, we can see name dollar now equals Rick. Do one more step and name dollar equals name dollar plus banner and you can see that the string has changed. Again another step, we can scroll over and see the full string, step again and it's even longer. So that's quite straightforward, quite simple. So now I've got a piece of code that creates an array that holds nine numbers. It's called matrix and we're going to have a little for next loop that counts from zero to nine uh, because arrays do start at zero so you actually end up with ten numbers. And we're going to fill each matrix entry with a random number between one and a hundred. So I'm going to remove that breakpoint and I'm going to put the breakpoint here now at line 25 and I need to watch matrix so if I scroll the full name there, add it to the watch list, you can see that it's set up there. So let's turn off debug mode and rerun it again. So we've stopped here. We can see that the string has been set. We step through. Now look, matrix is now showing. I can open up and I can see all 10 items within matrix. So we're now we're going to assign a random number into the first entry, and there you go, 80. And if we keep stepping through the loop, the next one, and the next one. And if I put a breakpoint here, turn off that breakpoint and continue, all of the entries get a random number between 1 and 100. OK, let's close that up. Let's remove that breakpoint. Now we're going to set up a multi-dimensional array called matrix 2. I'm looking at what's at matrix 2 index 0 and what's at matrix 2 1 index. So again let's put a little breakpoint there, rerun the debugger from scratch and then we should be able to open up and see that these numbers have been placed in like so. Now what's pretty cool is 
Okay, if I stop the debugging, get rid of the breakpoint, and wrap a do loop around this piece of code, and rerun. Okay, what we can do is we can turn on auto update. And now the program is running, but the debug is reporting what's happening to these values live. And we can slow down the update to 30 FPS, 10 FPS, and 1 FPS. So you can really fine tune your debugging as you're working through. Sometimes you really need to trace through a program and see where there's a mistake. Now we can see that this index here, 0, 10, and 1, 10, is not having a value set. And we can see that's why, because we've got 0 to 9. So if we change that code to that, we'll have to stop the debug and rerun it. Turn the auto update on again. And there you can see index 10 is now being set. You can close these up and open them at will. OK, so let's get rid of the do loop. Because the debugger also works for types. A type is a structure of data. This one's called record. And then I set up a, a variable called data using that structure. I fill in a couple of names and a couple of ages. So we just take that. There we are, we see the names. And the same would apply to the ages. So that's how the debug works. It remembers what you've typed in, so you can go to another project, come back to this one, and you'll have your watch list as you left it in your project. And the auto update is a really cool feature. Okay, that concludes today's video. Please subscribe, click the bell for updates. If you'd like to learn more about our pre-order offer coming up in March, then sign up to our newsletter on the Game Creators website here. Bye for now and thanks for watching.